a long, long way to go. Don't get it done. I have a list, so that's step number one. Writing it down. Write Checking it down. It twice. Checking yes. it twice. You can get some done on Cyber Monday, right? Yeah, that's Today true. Is the day. Today is the day. <laughs> Are you one of the many who is cyber shopping? Today we're talking 60 million plus Goodness. people cyber shopping today. The National Retailer Federation says 68 million people plan to shop and the projected Cyber Monday sales, get this, nine billion dollars. But you do need to watch out for some scams. There are two scams to keep on your radar. We're talking about non-delivery and non-payment. Non-delivery means you don't get your package. So here are some ways to protect yourself this Cyber Monday. Get tracking numbers and make sure that you check sellers' feedback rating. And for sellers, beware of credit card purchases where the address of the card does not match the shipping address and contact your bank immediately if you are concerned. All right, we have to bring in the one and only Brian Ben on Brian. this one. We've talked about holiday shopping. Brian, our digital expert, have yeah. you started holiday shopping? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Cliffhanger. Uh, I'm not going to lie. What's that? You, you left us out there on the cliff. We were waiting for the Yeah, response. we didn't know yeah, what was I mean, happen. you know what? We, are, Me and my wife are expecting a new edition, so uh, that list is going to get oh, cut. Oh, yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Did you just debut that while we're debuting a new show? I saw it absolutely. on Facebook, I just think. Just some breaking news oh, right Brian, in there. Congratulations. Nice. Okay, you. I have two presents purchased. You have two presents two. purchased yep. to Haysha. I have a list. <laughs> I got a list. <laughs> That's I got it. a list. Just a list. And yeah. I have a list. Are you checking it twice? Yes. You should. <laughs> All right, so we've always heard, though, that it's better to give than to receive, of course. And small business owners in downtown Greensboro are teaming up because they really want to make it easier for you to give while you shop. It's a campaign called Givesboro. Take a look at this. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere you go in downtown Greensboro. Small business owners like Jamie Hall are decorating in their own ways, hanging sweaters, not stockings, and adding price tags instead of gift tags. This will be my second Christmas and I'm excited about that. But before customers leave her shop, Hall hopes they'll drop some change in this donation jar. Communities won't be what they are unless people are contributing to them. She's one of nearly 40 shop owners participating in Givesboro, a campaign to raise money for the Interactive Resource Center. The money from Givesboro will go directly back into the IRC and the services that we provide every day. The IRC is a day center downtown that helps people experience homelessness. Gary Nan says Givesboro is giving the IRC something more valuable than money. But I think it's also very a special and unique situation for our guests to know that um, outside of our walls there are people that care about them and their situation and want to improve and change things for them. During the coldest nights, the IRC transforms into a warming center, a place to get people off the streets. It's why Steve Mitchell of Scuppernog Books decided to get involved. Winter's coming and people don't have a place to be and a place to stay. And we need something like that to uh, keep people safe. It's the second year downtown businesses have teamed up and Mitchell hopes Givesboro brings more customers through Scuppernog's doors and helps the community in more ways than one. And we do it because we care about the city that we're in and the community that we're in and it supports us and we support the people around us. Back across Elm Street, Hall is open for business, asking Santa not just for a lot of shoppers, but a lot of caring customers this Christmas. Part of the holidays is not just buying presents and buy, buying like party outfits, it's also giving back. And it's so important to give during the holiday season and just remember that that's part of the holidays. Yeah, cool initiative here, yeah. making it easy. You don't want to add anything else to your list, right, Tasha? No. Well, I will add this to my list. I saw a little candle. Oh, gosh. Would you like it is what I wanted to ask. You're shopping for me during For that you. Story. Should I add it to my list? Yeah. Okay. I like add sweet it. baked goods. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's Perfect. tell you how to get involved, though, with Givesboro. There are a few options. They have the $10 discount card. If you buy that, you get discounts at some of those businesses. You saw the donation jars. You can drop some change in there. Or at some places, you can even round up your total. Easy as that. Two for one. Yep, all Two the money one. to that's the IRC. Yeah. We need to give some advice to the Panthers. I oh, think that's no. what's next on the list. Oh, no. 
Oh boy, the question we're all asking, what exactly is going on with the Panthers? It wasn't pretty losing to the two win Redskins this past Sunday at home, but there was a little bit of good, right? Although it only lasted so long. Christian McCaffrey making pros look like amateurs. Kyle Allen actually throwing a pair of touchdowns, both Curtis Samuel and DJ Moore in the first quarter at that. Feeling good, Panthers fans thinking, okay, we're going to get back to 500 on the year, but it only got worse. In fact, CMC and the Panthers only netted 65 yards in the running game while Washington more than tripled it with 248 yards on the ground. An even crazier stat, you're not going to like this, on the Panthers' first two drives and last two drives of the game, they racked up 226 net yards. But in the other nine offensive drives of the entire ball game, oh, they only mustered 70 yards. So to put it simply, you won't win like this, and it has us wondering, will Coach Ron Rivera even make it to the end of the year? Guys, what do you think? I like that you put it simply because yes. I needed you to break it <laughs> yes. down for so, me. So what did you think of the game? Uh, what time was the game? <laughs> you didn't miss much. Okay. No, no, much. No. I, told, Sorry. I told her earlier, I said, I wish I was wherever you were instead of <laughs> yeah. watching that game. So ESPN, and I know all the bloggers have been saying that Rivera is probably on the line. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, myself included, hate to hear that. But when you don't have a winning season for so many years mm -hmm. in a row, since 2015, you're not making the playoffs. No, man. Four game, four losses in a row. You know, I don't think it's all Coach Ron Rivera's fault. Kyle Allen's still very new to the NFL and trying to get his – just trying to – mold well with the team that's not right. working out so far. Yeah, is it more of a coaching problem or is it the quarterback position, right? Because there's been so much turmoil at QB this year. Yeah, you know, it makes you wonder quite a bit, but I think we're all missing Cam Newton a little bit more. We thought, it was funny, earlier in the season a lot of people said, it's Kyle Allen's mm -hmm. team, Cam right. Newton, you got to trade him, save right. that $19 million. But now, you know, when you put, when you think if Cam Newton was under center, might be a little bit different. I don't think it's they'd be five and seven. Mm -mm. Tepper, is... Tepper said that he couldn't sleep. He woke up two times yeah, in the I middle of the that. night a couple weeks ago during wow. the Atlanta game. He said after that he was so mad. Next day he calls an impromptu press conference oh, no. and says, I will not deal with mediocrity. So. And it continues to go down that path, so we'll see what happens Absolutely. in the coming weeks. Thank you, Luke. Appreciate it. All right, uh, let's see what's going on with our uh, forecast. I want to let you know what's happening with that tonight. Uh, tonight, overnight lows around 31 degrees. You'll see some scattered clouds. Hey, don't be surprised if maybe in the mountain and foothill communities. I know you see flurry. We might see that in the northwest. N no accumulation, nothing to worry about. But a flurry or two with that 31 degree overnight low. Then tomorrow, high temperatures under sunshine will make it up to about 50 degrees. That's still well below our normal. We should be in the upper 50s this time of the year. So when you look at the planning forecast for tomorrow, we'll be at uh, looks like 31 degrees tomorrow morning as you make your way out, 38 by midday. And again, that afternoon high with a few clouds of 50 degrees. All right, so I have a question for you. When did you start decorating for Christmas? Apparently now it's socially acceptable since it's in the month of December. <laughs> this is my tree that I had up since October. Yeah, sorry about it. Coming up, we're gonna take a look at some viewer <laughs> decorations and make sure you are sharing your photos with us if you do happen to have some decorations up. Just make sure that you write that hashtag four to five and we'll check in with digital expert Brian Bennett to see your photos next after the break. <laughs>
Welcome back to the four to five. Hey, don't forget that we are live on Facebook right now as we speak, and it will be that way every day. Go to WFMY News 2's Facebook page. You can uh, watch, take us with you wherever yeah. you're going, yeah. and make sure you use the hashtag. It's the same thing you see back here, <laughs> 425 with the number two being People there. People are already commenting. Oh, good, good, good. Everyone is loving it. And Melissa says we are doing a fantastic job. Thank you for Thank watching, you so Melissa. Much. We appreciate it. Check can I just say hi to mom? Because I know she's watching, <laughs> and I know Maddie's mom is watching, so hello. That's right. <laughs> Very good. All right, it seems like every time we turn around, another holiday special is on everybody has their favorites mm -hmm. lots of childhood memories I used to get excited when I'd see the intro to certain shows oh, yeah. what was your favorite growing up Tasha do you think Elf which is kind of a new classic still, so it wasn't classic, so much though. growing up more in my teens tweens but I still love it so my favorite movie to watch around the holidays isn't technically considered a holiday movie I love to watch singing in the rain oh. Oh. it just oh. makes me feel nostalgic and happy yeah. like Christmas does that's very cool some people debate that Die Hard is a Christmas movie oh, right? I, I thought we you can. were gonna we say that I did too nope. I, I did too nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I went out today and I asked folks at Friendly Shopping Center what they thought. Here's what they had to say. Take a look. And it's early at Friendly Center. What is the best kids holiday special on TV? Oh, Rudolph. Probably Frosty. Probably Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I love the Misers. Rudolph, of course. I think everybody looks there. Rudolph's on CBS tonight, just saying. Oh, yeah, I already I got a program. <laughs> I already know. <laughs> they send me to Friendly Center, and all I want to do is shop. I stop everything. I, I'm distracted. I can win a BMW. How do I do it? My ADD kicked in. <laughs> I grew up with four kids in our family, and we'd all gather on the television and watch it. We didn't have DVRs back then. You cried when Frosty melted. Yes. <laughs> but he comes back, a spoiler alert. My kids love it. They love it. They watch it every year. When you're older, I think that you just, those are the, the good memories. Those were the neatest cartoons when I was a kid. Rudolph's on CBS tonight, mm -hmm. just in case you didn't know. Excellent. You already knew. Yep. <laughs> Can't we get anything that faster. <laughs> That's a wrap. Boom. We, we left out Brian. I didn't ask Brian what his favorite uh, holiday show. I gotta well, ask right you, what, which one? My favorite, Eric, has to be Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Excellent. Eric. Ah, <laughs> that's a good perfect. One. Well, the, good news. By the way, if you if I added up everybody and what they said, Rudolph was number one, Frosty was number two of the people I talked to. So here's a movie I used to watch all the time. Not saying it's my favorite. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Oh, I had it on VHS. I didn't know that was a movie. It, there was one version, cartoon oh, version, and I used to watch it all the time, and I loved it. And and I love the song too. I, I, I hate what happened to Grandma. Dr. Elmo. I still love the Poor song. Grandma. I know. You know, he Don't was a listen. pharmacist, the guy that wrote that song. Oh, was really? a, I got to interview him once. He was a pharmacist. How that do you answers go from a lot that of questions. To that. I that's, don't know. that's a good side hustle. It was a joke. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, so I love watching Christmas movies, but even more so, I like to go around, drive around the neighborhoods, look at the Christmas lights and the decorations. Love Anybody else? That. Always. Yeah. Love yes. To yeah. Yeah. Love to go see the fancy houses that are all lit up, maybe the Biltmore House at Christmas. So let's walk this way because I wanted to show you what's going on at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Yes, the First Lady is decorating the White House for Christmas. Now, the theme this year is Spirit of a America and it really highlights patriotism. We'll give you a closer look at the highlights here. First, the gold star tree. So these are ornaments that are decorated by gold star families and you can see some of those right here. My personal favorite, the gingerbread houses. We have the White House, the Alamo, the Statue of Liberty and the Gateway Arch in St. Louis. Now they used 200 pounds of gingerbread. Can you imagine that? 25 pounds of icing, 35 pounds of chocolate, by the way. Of course, the White House advent calendar and another favorite moment of mine here, the East Colonnade. It is a timeline of American design, innovation, and architecture, and you can see it just sparkles really. Rows of see-through panels etched with more than 60 examples of American design. Now, the First Lady started planning in July, so we have to ask, when did you start decorating for Christmas? She's got me beat, because I had it in October, <laughs> and I thought I was early. Well, I thought you'd be Well, I first. guess she was planning, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I, right. I didn't start planning till But October. your tree was up, But right? my tree was up. Before yes. Halloween. Before Halloween, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I just love that. Christmas. You know, when you come home and you see the hey. lights on, it just makes me happy. Always makes you happy. We started uh, this past weekend. Yes. Yeah, we got the, got the tree up and, and decorated, and that's always fun. But the outside hasn't been done yet. Mm. Mm. I did decorate before Thanksgiving this year because it was a late Thanksgiving, so we only have a few weeks right. with our Christmas decorations, and it just makes my apartment look better. 
You makes you I mean? happy though, doesn't it? It really it does. Really I need to get one of those where you can put on the smart timer, you can connect it into that, and then I could say when I'm at home, hey Alexa, turn on the Christmas <laughs> tree I light. Do. Guess That's who just convinced so that me to buy know. one on Black Friday? Ah, Eric convinced me. All right, digital expert Brian Bennett, we're bringing you in because people are commenting on our Facebook page. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're getting a lot of pictures in. Uh, a lot of people actually got started early. Uh, Tammy says uh, she actually put up her tree November the 3rd, so she got a pretty early start there. Uh, that looks pretty good. Uh, <laughs> Cass, uh, she put up her uh, tree on Thanksgiving Day. How cool beautiful. is that? Wow. Beautiful tree. And let's go on. Lisa says she put her, hers up on Columbus weekend. Oh, wow. Yep, she really got a is. jump start there. And Melanie looks like, Tahesha, you said you put yours up around Halloween. She put hers yeah. up on Halloween as well. <laughs> I actually put it on the same day as uh, Lisa. So she okay. put hers up on the uh, holiday weekend, Columbus, Columbus Day. Day. Yeah. That was the same weekend oh, that I actually okay. put mine up. That's perfect. So we're twins. Can you Have say you decorated? Uh, this week. This week. <laughs> <laughs> Good it's answer. On the list. Good answer. <laughs> I love that. But Tahesha, you've done some decorating. Eric's done some decorating. I think we're ready for this. We are ready. This is crunch time. It is right crunch now time to get things done. You make me nervous. I can't Don't even think nervous. about it. Yeah. Don't be nervous. I got more to do. I got more to do. That's it. Right. Hey, so here's a very cool thing about our show. We are going to continue to talk to you while we're in break. We're on our Facebook page. Look, I have it right here on my phone. I'm yep. reading your yep. comments. Yeah. I know what you're saying. I'm going to comment back. We Judy says, I just love the new show. Ah, oh, thank you, Judy. We appreciate and Jimmy it. Jimmy says he's got to go get a tree. Go get a go tree. Go get one local if you can. Yeah, Today. absolutely. Yeah. Do it. We'll see you after the break. We'll be back. <laughs> Hey, welcome back everyone to your four to five. We are connecting with you not only on air, but also online on Facebook. So make sure while you're watching, use that hashtag four to five and we can see your comments as we watch the show and talk about it here. That's because Brian Bennett is standing by and watching <laughs> the feed for us and letting us know what everybody's saying out there. Absolutely. Brian. All Absolutely. Right. So today is Cyber Monday, Brian. Okay. Everyone is shopping online today. Online shoppers projected to spend nine billion dollars. Billion with a B. B. Like your name, Brian. Right. B. 
I spent twenty dollars already. Congratulations. Did you spend anything? Nothing yet. Okay. Right after this show. Right after yep. this show. So that's what we wanted to ask you. When do you do your Cyber Monday shopping? We won't tell anyone, but your yep. options there are below. Do you do it at work? Do you do it before work or after work? Go to WFMY.com slash vote now and that's our interactive way of getting yes. you involved with the polls, but you can also write on our Facebook page the answer <laughs> that you want to give as well. I just want to point out it is anonymous. Yes, your boss that's is what I was not about going to, say. to know <laughs> if you vote. At work. In fact, we won't use names. We'll just say somebody says they mm -hmm. do it at work. How yeah, about that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the top three items that Cyber Monday shoppers want. And this one is one that I really love. A Hulu subscription for $1.99 a month, but it's new subscribers only. So if you're already paying $7.99 or $11.99, won't count for you. Another good streaming option, Disney Plus annual subscription, $59. And an Xbox One S with three games. That costs a dollar forty nine. Oh, a dollar forty nine. That would be like, nice. A hundred forty nine dollars <laughs> at Walmart. Do you, you think they'll that? price match to Haitian? Right, right. right. Wouldn't that be nice? Now I heard this on WFMY News too that it was a dollar forty nine. Don't about, quote me. Don't. Quote I was going to log in right now <laughs> yeah. when you said that. Not only do we shop at work, we shop on uh, television. On the air. Oh, yeah. let's see real right. quick now. That has been known that to happen with me. Uh, all right, we're going to take a short break real quick, but uh, don't forget, keep talking to us on Facebook, right? Because you have to use that hashtag 425. Now, when should you throw away, this is my question mm. of the day, Thanksgiving leftovers. This was a topic in my house recently. Are people still eating Thanksgiving leftovers? Is that safe? Is it gross? You can chime in and let us know. We'll be right back. So here's a question for you. What is your favorite Thanksgiving leftover dish? Mm. Mm, that's a tough one. Mine might be stuffing mashed potatoes and gravy, if mm. I could combine all that into one. Uh, yeah, it, so it's Monday. Should we have thrown out the leftovers by now? My mother's yes. line was, leftovers are like company. After three days, throw them out. So that's, what, that's our <laughs> line. <laughs> three. 
My family, I hope you're not watching. They're watching. Well, they were here for three days, so it's perfect. All right. Um, so yeah, so that's the question. Is it gross if you keep do eating that by today? Or is that safe? And for us, it is three days. So by Sunday, mm -hmm. we're done. Oh, I probably would still eat it if I had any, but I went home for Thanksgiving and I didn't take anything with me on the plane. Apparently, I could have put a turkey in my carry-on because that was a thing that TSA told me I could do, but I didn't that's take advantage insane. of it. No, yeah. I actually don't like leftovers. I know, you don't After eat them I've at all. After I've had them, yeah. I'm done with it. I moved on. Thanksgiving's not my favorite meal anyway. I know, I'm sorry to hate you, but you can freeze it. Yeah, you can freeze it. And that's what a lot of the comments I'm getting on my Facebook page is I posted this question earlier, but most people say they stopped Sunday. What is that, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Yeah, so I was trying days. to count. Yeah, three days, three days. Yeah. okay. That three day sense. rule, we'll give you that. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can keep commenting, make sure you use that hashtag. It's uh, the word four, number two, word five. Post on my Facebook page, and if we have time, we'll chat about this again, interesting. Ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie, they forever go together. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the 4 to 5. I'm Eric Chilton, sitting here with Tahitia Morris and Maddie Gardner. We're having a little party. We yeah. are, and you are an Glad inaugural member of the 4 to 5 Club because you're watching our very first show. And Mom, I know you're watching. <laughs> Hi, I love you. Thanks for tuning in. So we are here to inform you, connect you, really make you feel like you're a part of our world, and we are having a great time doing it. Hey, we are still live on our YouTube page and on is 2com And if you want to be a part of the conversation, tweet at us or write on your Facebook page, and make sure you use that hashtag 4 to 5, and then we'll be able to see it. So let's get you caught up on the news of the day. We're going to get started now in our 4 to 5 roundup. Right now, there's an active investigation going on for a great Greensboro Porch Pirate. This happened in the Lindley Park area after UPS dropped off the package. We're talking moments later, someone came and stole it off that porch. GPD told the homeowner they couldn't find this suspect in red here, but we do have some tips for you. If this happens to you, a porch pirate comes by, report it immediately and also report any suspicious activity happening in your neighborhood. And if you have surveillance video, let police know. 
The North Carolina Department of Transportation is permanently closing a connector between US 52 and NC 66. We're talking roads here. This closure will happen Friday at noon. This is to make way for the Winston Salem Northern Beltway, that beltway opening in 2021. So starting tomorrow, NC 65 interchange will be closed overnight for that beltway project. And if you're heading that way, you need to exit at 118. In the meantime, we are now learning more about the victims in the London terror attack. We're learning there were two Cambridge University graduates, Jack M. Arrett and Sakia Joan. Now, British Security Services, they're currently monitoring 74 people convicted on terrorist crimes because they were all released early from prison, just like the suspect who was reported in this attack. That person was also released early, so now they're checking all the suspects just to make sure. In the meantime, the London Bridge has reopened. North Carolina Zoo, the bison there, Wiley and Annie, they are enjoying the rain that happened over the weekend. Maybe you didn't, but they did. The zoo shared this video and you can find the full video on the WFMY News 2 Facebook page. And then back here at home, baby Yoda meme, it's growing popular. And the city of High Point shared this photo. He is just so cute of baby Yoda wearing a Christmas hat. If that doesn't get you into the Christmas spirit, don't know I don't does. know what will. You know, I haven't watched The Mandalorian yet, which I is where either. this baby Yoda meme is from, but he's so cute. I foresee a marketing frenzy with little dolls well, everywhere. Disney is genius, right? Oh, yeah, they they released Disney Plus right, right before the holidays, and now they can sell Baby Yoda merchandise, clothes, toys, memes. They're always on <laughs> it. But the memes are free, so make one. Yeah, that's exactly. Exactly. in it because we want to see it. <laughs> excited we are. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I said excited we are. Hmm? Yeah, that's Yoda. That's our baby Yoda. Maybe not baby. Yoda. Oh, okay. That was growing Adult up. Yoda. Close enough. <laughs> no children. Okay, so you guys have seen me. I am constantly hand sanitizing. Oh yes. All the time. It is flu season. But how do you know if you have the cold or if you have the flu? Big difference here. The CDC shared this photo. Let's break it down for you. So the flu is going to hit you suddenly. You're going to have a fever, aches, chills and fatigue. You're going to feel sleepy with that flu. But if it's a cold, you won't have the fever or the chills. You might have some sneezing, a stuffy nose and a sore throat. So important to know the difference there. And depending on where you live, you'll want to stay inside. So maybe you don't catch a cold or get one a little bit easier. There are currently 50 million Americans in the path of a major snowstorm, mostly in the northeast right now. There's a lot of heavy <coughs> rain and snow. Six deaths have been blamed for storm uh, related things over the weekend. There were two people that died in Arizona from flash flooding and officials say a storm caused a deadly plane crash in South Dakota. Now the snow has already hit here in North Carolina. This is a photo of the Blue Ridge Parkway snow in that area north of Asheville this morning. And just keep this in mind. There is a part of the parkway that is closed ahead of uh, more weather potentially heading our way. Yeah, we want to talk about our forecast heading into the night tonight. So we'll look at this hour by hour for you and you know, basically just partly cloudy skies. I think we clear completely out in the overnight and this will be toward the early morning hours by 1 a.m. You can see our icons here showing mostly clear skies. Temperatures are going to drop down significantly tonight. I mean, we'll go to the 30s, uh, low to mid 30s. Wind gusts have been an issue today so far. You're looking at 23 miles per hour for Augusta and Winston Salem. 31 miles per hour in Greensboro, and then we'll put that up to 32 miles per hour in Boone and Galax at 33. Overall, look for overnight lows tonight in the 30s, highs tomorrow right around 50. And don't be surprised if you see a flurry in the mountains heading into the evening tonight. So losing someone you love is always tough. You want to keep them around. Well, an Ashboro family came up with a unique way to remember their six year old son who passed away earlier this year. All they have to do is look down. I am mommy. A little boy full of life and love. Wonderful. Precious. Gone. I just miss him. Six-year-old Owen Green died unexpectedly after getting sick in January. It's just total nightmare um, daily. Nine months later. It's an ache that never goes away. The pain is still raw. It's not right. Parents shouldn't have to lose their children. As you look around the house, reminders of Owen are everywhere. But his mother, Amber, wanted something deeper, something permanent. And I wanted to have a part of him. So she decided to get her son's doodles tattooed on her arm. 
I love you so much, Mom, Owen, because that's what he wrote to me. That was the first one that I done. What started as one tattoo quickly grew to a sleeve. I can look down at my arm and see my son every day. Each drawing meaningful. I've got our family portrait. Each drawing exact. All of this is just as it was in his books. Owen's father, Jeremy, also tattooed his arm with his son's work. I love you so much, Dad, Owen. The Greens say the tattoos are conversation starters. When you actually start telling them, then they go, oh my God, I am so sorry. And then you're like, no, I don't want you to be sorry. I, let me tell you about this. That sometimes get others to open up about their grief. Even though he's passed, he's still... No, he's not gone. Bringing people together. And while they can't have Owen back... Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to mommy. A piece of him will be with them forever. As long as I'm here, everybody will know Owen and remember him and think of him because he will live through me. I do want to say thank you to the Green family for yeah. opening up their homes and just telling me something so, so personal. And I mean, there's really no way to remember someone fully, but to just have a uh, to forget someone, I should say fully, but just to have a piece of them with them, you know, wherever they go, it, right. it really is great. I love the first time I saw that when I saw the image of her holding up the, the book next, next to the true. tattoo and it's the exact drawing. Yeah. Like, as a father, I can tell you that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a big statement. Yeah. What well, struck me, parents always save their kids' drawings. They're on the fridge, mm -hmm. they're in drawers. My mom has all of our things. You never imagine that that's what you're going to use that, that drawing yeah. for. That's beautiful. It and is. that was just a couple things that they did to honor their son. They also adopted the road in front of their house in his honor, and they started an endowment at Randolph Community College mm -hmm. in his name as well, so that other students there can fulfill their dreams that he didn't get a chance to. Very good, great story. Yeah. All right, we want to tell you about a concerning post that is making the rounds on Facebook. So I want you to follow me over here because it claims that human traffickers are using zip ties to zip tie people's windshield wipers together in the hopes of distracting that person and then possibly kidnapping them. But is that viral Facebook post actually true. We're going to verify it for you. So our sources here are the police department in College Station, Texas, because they say the post originated there. A person there says they found the zip ties on their windshield after they were shopping at a mall and then they connected it back to human traffickers because the post went viral at the same time rumors of a kidnapping at the same mall were spreading. So police say yes, this could be a tactic by human traffickers, but there is nothing to back up this claim, so we can verify that this post is false. By the way, we also reached out to the Greensboro Police Department. They say even if the post is not true, you should always be aware of your surroundings, and this includes messing with your cell phone. Don't let it distract you. Just keep your head up and always stay alert. All right, Missy, I'm going to give you less stress. Oh. Chilton, I think you need sleep. Oh, boy, you're not yes. oh, what do I get? All right, you're going to get energy. Ooh. Uh huh. Oh All right, God. wouldn't it be nice as if you could just put a patch on like that and boom, everything like that yes. just works. Yeah, just like be that. Great. I know. At 5:45, we're going to be talking about health patches and whether or not you should be using them. Hmm. I hope they work. Okay, so you know about smoking patches and that yeah, yeah. kind of stuff, but this is totally different. Let's see what the doctor says. I think that sometimes there's this placebo effect where people wear this product or take this supplement and they feel better because they're doing other changes in their lifestyle that are impacting how they overall feel. All right, so feeling better is feeling better. I mean, I think that's a win in itself, but is it enough? We're gonna talk about it on Two Wants to Know at 545. Speaking of health, there are all kinds of mental and physical benefits of having a pet. I want to show you this person and their <laughs> pet and see if you can tell that this pet actually gives them all the love and adornment as possible. Who is it? Oh, my giant head. I think I remember this face. <laughs> Look at that. That's Stewie. Okay, so Stewie makes you happy, yes? He makes me the happiest. Oh. Right. He makes you physically happy. He does. He emotionally happy. Yeah. The question is, how well do you know your Stewie? Dun, dun, dun. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Okay, they can't talk to you, right? But right. how would you know if something was wrong with your pet? 
Hmm. Interesting. It changes the behavior, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Changing routines. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So more and more cats and dogs are being diagnosed with cancer. By the time you actually take them to the vet, it's usually too late. So we're going to give you some subtle things for you to look out for that could indicate that something is wrong. All right. We got one last thing to tell you about on Two Wants to Know, and it's the battle of the sexes. Ooh, ding, ding, it's coming ding. up in 25 minutes. We're talking about what's called the pink tax. Why does shampoo for guys cost less than for girls? I don't like oh. it. <laughs> and how do we figure that out? We're going to talk about it. Thanks, Tanya. <laughs> it's interesting here. Okay, so we all know the story of Rudolph, but there's some crazy behind the scenes story about this special. It's been around for decades that you won't believe. We have an expert to take us behind the glow. Mm. That is coming up in just a minute. All right, we love all the social media apps, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, but how often do you post your kiddos on there? And are you a sharent, a parent who shares too much? Our sister station is taking a closer look at this. I mean, there's this one thing she posted on YouTube and it's really embarrassing because it was just like me when I was younger. I got dressed as a princess when I was like <laughs> four or five. <laughs> I completely forgot about that. Sometimes our pictures that she posted are a little embarrassing. Every airballed shot, don't post that. <laughs> Every anchor breaker, don't post that. <laughs> now if he makes it, post that. Yeah, yeah, see, see how that works. No, I don't. I'm mainly posting about what our family's doing, uh, the fun stuff we're uh, engaged in. If there are any challenges, we post about that too. I mean, I post it because I think it's things that I just want to share with like friends and family. Wow. Wow. And that's true because we start posting video of the fetus. I saw an ultrasound picture on Facebook, a 3D ultrasound picture. It was so good, I could tell that the baby looked like her daddy. Ethan is our, our little baby, he's two, and uh, he has his own page. 
little video. So, but 90% I did not know that. The fetus that looked like he's dead. <laughs> I love it. I, I love, love it. Her. It was great. It does scare me a little bit when we know everything about the child, where I they agree. go to school, their first, middle, last name. Oh. If you post and tag where you are and all that stuff, man, it makes me a little just nervous. Now you just made me nervous. See? I don't even have kids yet, and I'm nervous. Just thinking about it. I'm already nervous. And now you know. Just now I know. <laughs> So I want you to check this out. Tonight is the night, right? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer airs at 8 o'clock right here on WFMY News 2. One of the most popular kids holiday specials of all time. But do you know how much about the classic show is kind of the behind the scenes trivia? You may not know all this. My guest today knows more than any of us ever will combined. I'm joined by Rick Goldschmidt today. He's the author of The Enchanted World of Rankin Bass. That is the production company that brought us a lot of those classic holiday specials. Hi, Rick. How are you? Hi, good. All right, let's get to some of the behind the scenes stuff because we all know the story and the backstory uh, about Rudolph, but tell us probably what is the number one fact that people are shocked to hear when they talk to you? Well, maybe that the animation was done in Japan. <laughs> it wasn't done in the U.S. Oh. And uh, it was a stop motion animagic uh, form of animation that Arthur Rankin and Jules Bass discovered and made famous by bringing personality to the characters, you know, now which I, wasn't really seen. I heard a story once that the, the original version that aired on, on its debut date in 1964 was not shown for many years after that. What, what was the story with that? Right, well, the General Electric Company decided they wanted some changes in 1965 and wanted a new song, so they put Fame and Fortune in where we're a couple of misfits was. And they also changed the ending from an elf throwing packages off with credits on them to a bunch of uh, characters being thrown off the sleigh with umbrellas. So those would be the misfit toys originally weren't rescued from the island, but they added it back in later because kids were upset, I guess, right? Right. Well, they added it in, I think, because of Willard Saloff, who worked at General Electric. He just decided he wanted some changes and Arthur Rankin uh, obliged just because he got the show on the air in the first place. But Arthur Rankin really liked the first version better <laughs> and, and, and so did I. And just real quick, we're about out of time, but can, can you see that original version anywhere or is that lost forever? Well, I have the original version on DVD. Um, Arthur Rankin paid to transfer it. Um, I don't know why CBS hasn't restored any of the scenes that we're talking about. It's unfortunate, and the Blu-rays have really been poor at best. So hopefully in the future we'll get it out. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate you spending time with us today, and I'm sure you'll be watching tonight like the rest of us. <laughs> thank you. Merry Christmas. And don't forget Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It airs tonight at 8 o'clock right here on WFMY News 2. The 4 to 5 continues in just a minute. Stay there. Hi there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 8, 10.
Welcome back to your four to five. We appreciate you joining us here <laughs> on air and online. We've been keeping up with the comments that you've been posting on social media. Yes, we have our digital expert, Brian Bennett here. What are people saying? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Melissa Brown said, we wish we could hear what they're saying during commercial Ooh. breaks. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you don't. We'll I never know. tell. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, We're just having fun. And then Susan said, uh, enjoying the new show all the way from Orlando. Oh, oh nice. Okay. Well, thank you for tuning in from wherever you're tuning in from. We enjoy you having <laughs> We enjoy you being here. All right, now it is time to check the inbox. So every day, guys, we are going to read a message, an email, a comment, or a post from you. We're talking the good, the bad, and the ugly. So this one comes from my Facebook page. <laughs> Mary Jane posted, you're off work again. You take the most time off more than anybody. So I wanted to talk about this one because I really appreciated Mary Jane, you know, missing me maybe, wondering where I was at work. But it's funny because I actually get the least time off out of everyone because I'm one of the newest hires. It's well, because she takes giant chunks off. Yeah, That's why. you go off and you take a week and you go to Europe. Yeah. And you leave us wanting cannolis yep. and all the spaghetti. I'm going, I plan wisely. Okay. I'm going to Holden Beach. She's yeah. going to the south of France. Yeah, because you know. Eric has at least how many? 72 have, days no. off? No. Oh, wow. I'm just kidding. 37. <laughs> But just Ed Matthews has 42. Always throwing Ed under the say. bus. Uh, by the way, these are just our thoughts and opinions on the feedback. Yes. We have more of that coming up in just a few minutes in our My Two Cents piece, courtesy of Maddie Gardner. Yes. And thank you, Mary Jane. <laughs> and coming up on WFMY News 2 at 5 o'clock, several viewers shared videos with us showing delivery drivers tossing packages onto doorsteps. You've also sent us some surveillance video of people just stealing packages. A closer look at the pros and cons of these types of deliveries right to your home today at 5. Plus, the medical world is changing with the times in your to your well-being. Things you might not know about the HIV virus. Stick around for WFMY News 2 at 5. We'll be right back. Hey there, Mike Check. Hashtag, does Maddie take too many vacations? One, two, three, four, five, six. Hi there, one, two, three, four, five. Good to know. I will bring out a wee next time. No, we have all of them. Hello, Mike Check. One, two, three, four, five. Mike Check, three, two, one. Mike Check, three, two, one. I'm at NRM. Hey, Mike Check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Standing at touch right here. One done. Hey guys, I'm giving you a mic check. Ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie. They forever go together.
is my two cents and we're going to do this every day. Wrap up the four to five by sharing what we think about a topic or just something interesting we saw. And to be perfectly honest with y'all, it's been hard for me to piece together how I'm feeling about anything all day long because buzz, 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 this distracting and pesky phone vibrating, alerting me to yet another email landing in my inbox. Don't miss this deal. 75% off now. Cyber Monday discount today and today only. How could you not know there's a Cyber Monday sale or a Black Friday deal or a Thanksgiving Day doorbuster because I have at least 40, what, 45 reminders in my inbox. The constant buzz, buzz, buzz of my phone, it honestly makes me want to throw it, but I won't because then I'll have to shop for a new one and risk getting more emails. Is it just me or is every store I've ever thought about shopping at emailing me with the discount code or making sure I know about their big sale? You know, it's gotten to the point where a large chunk of my weekend